So what are the messages that fathers must communicate to their sons? Well, this is Jason for Soulfire. Here in this channel, we try to offer gospel hope for a porn-filled world, and I'm trying to remind you that living in sexual integrity is possible. But how are we as fathers going to pass on to our sons the idea that living in sexual integrity is possible? Well, given the work that I do, presentations that I've done for churches and for parents, I'm often asked by fathers, how do I help my son in this battle for integrity? What are the things I need to say to him? How can I have that conversation? Now, maybe there's already been some exposure to pornography, or maybe you're just trying to be preemptive and think through what do I need to communicate? And typically, as I was communicating to fathers, I had about three messages that I was saying that they needed to pass on. But then I read Larry Crabb's book, Men of Courage. Now, previously this book was called The Silence of Adam. I actually read it in college uh, almost 20 years ago. Really enjoyed the book then. It's now been updated and it's now called Men of Courage. And in that book, Larry Crabb talks about three messages fathers must pass on to their sons. And actually, there was a lot of overlap with what I was trying to communicate to fathers, but turns out Larry Crabb's advice was better. So I'm gonna use his three messages and formulate that for here in my channel as I try to think about advice that you need to give as a father to your son. Now, if you wanna check out Larry Crabb's book, Amazon link is in the description. It's $15.99 at the time of this recording. I just did this book with a small group of men who were in their 20s. Went really well, the men really enjoyed it. I think it's a resource that I'm gonna use for discipling college students and also helping men develop their integrity. So with that said, let's jump right in. What is the first message that we need to communicate to our sons? And the first message would be that you are not alone. It is critical for helping our sons understand their struggles that we can communicate to them as fathers, you are not alone. In fact, one of the big works of Satan in their life is going to convince them when it comes to their struggles, the things that they're battling, that they're the only one. And if you help men with pornography addiction recovery, one of the things they frequently say when it's the first time that they confess their sin to others is that they were convinced they were the only one who struggled with this. So if your son is young, he's fallen into sexual sin and temptation, perhaps he's thinking, as Satan is wanting him to believe, that he's the only one who struggles with this and certainly nobody could relate and especially not his father. Fathers must communicate that they understand the struggle. And so one of the things I was telling fathers for years was, can you say to your son, hey, this is what the struggle has looked like in my life. This is my story, this is my journey. You know, I saw that stuff when I was your age and, and this is what that looked like. Communicate to your son that they are not alone. Perhaps it'd be a great time for you to share how you've built and put boundaries into your life. And you say, hey, listen, son, I'm 30 or 40, so I'm 38, you know, my, my son is eight years old. I can say to him, this is what boundaries look like in my life so I don't fall back into that temptation for pornography and sexual sin. I've got, maybe you use something like covenant eyes on your devices. You can now say to your son, listen, you're not alone. This is a battle that we fight as men. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to men. Open the scriptures, share with them how sexual sin and sexual temptation is a reality for men. If you don't communicate this idea, then your son is going to believe, you know, my dad can't relate to this. I can't get help. I'm all alone. Last thing you want your son to think is that you as their dad are not the place that they can go and the resource that they can go to get help with something like this. I want my son to understand he can come to me with his temptations. He can come to me with his struggles. I hope he'll come to me and not go to Google when he has questions about sex or sexuality. It's my job as a dad to help him with this. And one of the first messages I wanna to communicate to him is that he's not alone. Now, that's the first of three, but if you're finding this video helpful, definitely hit the like button. It helps my channel to grow. Let's keep going. Let's get in with message number two. Message number two is I believe in you. Well, in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 17, before Jesus had done any ministry, at his baptism, a voice from heaven came down and it said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. You see, Jesus heard from his Father that God believed in him. He was well pleased. God was communicating as a loving Father. He loved Jesus and he believed in him. You know, our Heavenly Father has a calling for us. When you think of all the commands in Scripture and you think of all the things that we are asking our sons to do, can you pass on to them, you have what it takes? that I believe in you, you can do this. Second Peter 1.3 says, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. As a father, I wanna to communicate to my son. One of the main messages of this channel of soul fire is that living in sexual integrity is possible. I believe in you. You see, Satan wants to communicate to us in our struggles and in our shame that we can't get it done, that we're an epic failure, that nobody would believe in us, nobody would truly love us if they knew what we'd struggle with, if they really knew who we were. Sexual sin brings the voice of shame, but as a father, we can speak powerful truths into the lives of our son as we say, I believe in you. And the last one here, message three, we must communicate to our sons is that it can be done. Unfortunately, many of us have really lacked a model for integrity. Perhaps your model of masculinity, maybe your father, 
actually gave you a bad example of living in integrity. Perhaps they abused women. You saw them looking at pornography. They encouraged you to do the same. You know, in working with college students, I've had many students that when their fathers found out they were looking at pornography, rather than offer them encouragement to live in sexual integrity, a lot of times the fathers just laughed or they said, hey, don't do anything stupid or they said, just make sure that you are safe. But can we as fathers communicate to our sons, living in sexual integrity is possible. It can be done. Can we lead a life and model of integrity that they would see us resisting temptations? They'd see boundaries that we've put in place to honor our wives, to honor the Lord, to honor people that are in our lives. You see, if you don't have a model, you may really conclude that it simply can't be done. The Christian life's too hard. We see so many Christian leaders who have fallen. Big stories of scandal from whether it's pastors or tremendous ministry leaders who fall into sin. It's easy for us to conclude it simply cannot be done. You know, one time I heard a pastor say something like, 93% of men look at pornography and the other 7% are liars. Now, what was that pastor communicating? He was communicating, listen, it can't be done. Even if you try, if you think you're one of the 7% that live in integrity, you're really just a liar. Yet in Hebrews 12 too, it says, we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses that there are men and women who have gone before us that have lived in integrity. I love that in 1 Kings 19, Elijah was struggling with this same idea. He believed he was the only one who was living in integrity. He believed he was the only one who was following God and had not bowed the knee to Baal. And maybe you think the same, and maybe that's what Satan wants you to believe, that nobody is living in integrity. Well, in 1 Kings 19, God reveals himself to Elijah through three powerful means. First, he brought a strong wind. Then he brought a fire. Then there was an earthquake. But it says that the Lord was not in those three things, but after that was a still, small voice. So here God comes to Elijah and he gives him this whisper, and this is what God says. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. God says to Elijah, it can be done. You're not alone. I believe in you. There are men who are living in integrity, and we must communicate those three things to our sons. You see, isn't this even more motivation for us as fathers as we think about our children? We want to model it for them. We want to communicate to them these messages, these powerful messages that will help them live in integrity. You see, our sons are watching. Let's communicate to them. You're not alone. I believe in you and it can be done. Well, what do you think? Are these messages you've communicated to your sons? What are some of the other messages that must be communicated if we want to see our kids live in sexual integrity? And as fathers, we've got to live lives of discipline. So let me encourage you, check out my video on discipline, where I talk about three specific areas, eating, sleeping, and exercise, and how those three areas are critical for building a life of discipline. Well, this is Jason for Soulfire. Be sure to like this video if it was helpful. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Let us know down in the comments, what do you think about these three messages? And I'll catch you in the next one.